So when you're working bowls around other people, whether it's private sessions with a massage table or groups of people lying on the floor, there's a few key things you have to remember. One of them is that if they have any metal in their body or if they're pregnant, you are not advised to go closer than two meters to them with the bowl. And the reason is with metal in your body, because the, the bowls, the, the vibrations, the sound vibrations from the bowls actually vibrate your cells, they vibrate your, your physical body, that when someone has like steel plates, for example, or a pacemaker, that when it's vibrating, it actually causes soreness around the metal and when it's someone is pregnant the hearing of the fetus can be very attuned and they're floating in fluid and fluid the sound carries quite strongly through fluid so it's just about the being protecting their forming ears so with that too, if you, you can let people know beforehand that that is the case or when people arrive, you could let them know and just get people to let you know if it requires for you to stay that couple of meters away from them. The only thing with that too though is you can get caught out because if someone has announced they're pregnant and everyone knows, there's no problem with that. But I have had one case where someone had not announced that they were pregnant and I, it was totally my fault that I had, it was a group of older people and there was one younger woman there and I was just more focusing on with all these older people, you know, pregnancy is not going to be a thing. Um, and so I just said, oh, if anyone has metal in their body, let me know. And so there were a couple of people who let me know and I was like, great. And then I just was flicking my eyes around and then I went, oh, oh, and, and I, and it was almost like a, you know, a flippant, a, a comment where I just went, oh, and you know, pregnancy is the other one, but like that wouldn't be the case for any of us or any, you know, anyone here. And then as my eyes were flicking around, there was this young woman. I went, oh, except maybe you. And and it was just a little bit like lighthearted joke. And of course, like, you know, what would be the chances that she'd be pregnant in this, you know, in this moment, in this group? And of course she was. And she was like, she just sort of had a look like a, uh-oh. And she was saying, well, actually I am. And it's like, oh, great, you know, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. And it was a group of people where they all knew each other. And she was saying, please don't tell anybody because it's in that early stage. So, of course, I was really like, oh, my goodness, of all the years I've been doing this, I've never actually come across a situation like that. Usually in a group situation, people can say, oh, yes, I've got metal in my body or you can let people know in advance or whatever. But this was just an informal group. It was not a paid thing. It was just a random thing. And I just wasn't paying attention enough and it totally was my fault so that all worked out well in the finish however really just be mindful that you're not putting people on the spot um, and I did have the thought afterwards that I could always have a written thing before people come and just provide them in writing to say if you are um, pregnant or consider that you may be or if you have metal in your body please let me know in advance and so it's not something that I'm speaking about you know in the room and I I can know to stay two meters away anyway that's that's a learning curve hopefully my experience can help avert that sort of thing happening for others and the other thing too is that when you're sounding bowls close to people like I do get bowls and I put them like above people's heads and in front of them and sometimes I work them around like you know their head if their head's here I can sort of work in front of and around or behind and around 
and some bowls, the, the lower bowls are deeper pitch generally, although the overtones can be quite high pitched, but the smaller bowls, they get higher and higher the notes. So sometimes they can be quite sharp with the pitch. So you don't want to get too close to people's ears because it actually can be too much physically for their ears and you have a duty of care in relation to their hearing. So that's super important. Um, as I've mentioned before, is you can work with a massage table. You can have people sitting on comfortable chairs. You can have them on recliners. People like to be on the floor sometimes. The only issue with the floor is that if you need to work the bowls around them and if you want to work the bowls on them, you need to be fit and able to be down on the floor yourself. And like I've got a bad back, so it actually creates problems for me to be leaning down over. And sometimes you're working on someone for an hour and it's just too much to be down on the floor and leaning over them and, and so forth. It's too much for... So just know what you know what you're capable of and work with that. The other thing too is that if you're working with someone and you're going to place the bowl on their body, for a start you would ask them in the first place uh, like that you can do it and say if I, if I get a vibe to put the bowl on your body I'm happy to do that but does that work for you? Would that be okay? And if they say yes then I say um, if I am going to do anything like that, I will just touch you on the shoulder gently first. And then once I've touched you on the shoulder, then you'll know that I'm about to do something like put a bowl on your body. So it's not a sort of a sudden surprise, especially when someone's having a session, they can go quite deep. And sometimes they can fall asleep, of course, but um, you, you'll know if that's the case. But if you just touch them just very gently on the shoulder and sometimes I'll even just a couple of times a little couple of taps and you can see that they're then they're they're tuned into that something's coming and then gently place the bowl on their stomach or you know, it could be on their back if you can work on both sides um, it can be up between their shoulders on the back and so forth um, the other thing too is and I tell people this like People can have extremely different responses to the bowls in terms of how they feel afterwards. They can be really energized and feel like they want to just, you know, bounce around and that's okay. Others feel just deeply, deeply relaxed and feel like they've just had a little holiday. Some people um, have had where the pain has disappeared that they came in with pain and they leave without it. Some people just feel incredibly tired and they just need to sleep. I had one person recently who had a session in the morning and they ended up having a big afternoon sleep and then that night they went to bed early they were just they couldn't quite stay awake and they slept for 11 hours straight and they were really quite surprised. And I always say it can turn out it can turn out in all sorts of different ways. So just be open and it's really awesome when people can be aware of those possibilities so they can plan for that. Like you wouldn't want to have it where they're about to go off and do some important something that they have to be really, you know, uh, alert and energized and awake. So that's that's a, a good idea. The other thing too is that when you're working with bowls with people, sometimes people can end up being quite ungrounded at the end if you don't know what you're doing or if you're not aware that that can be a possibility, particularly with some of the higher frequencies. So what I often do with people is give them a, a little handful of like just a little snack like I might put a little bowl of nuts on the table or chips or just something where they can actually just grab a little handful of something and put it in their mouth. And also I have a medicine drum, a Native American Indian medicine drum that sometimes I will just, you know, beat the drum 
at the end just to, to ground. Sometimes I will touch their feet and just hold their feet for half a minute and that can also make a big difference. And then the other thing I say is that if they go out the door, I always give them a little bit of space to not sort of be rushing off straight away. They sort of sort of come back into, integrate back into feeling like they're on the planet. And uh, I just suggest that as they're leaving, if they feel a bit lightheaded or ungrounded in any way, just put your feet on the ground, on the earth, and just stomp your feet a few times and that can make a huge difference as well. Um, the other thing too is that when you've sounded bowls around people, the vibration can last up to two weeks in their body. And I, I do mention that to them too because the changes, they can get flow on effects for up to two weeks in terms of physically. And as well as that, I mean, esoterically, there's all sorts of things that could be going on and there's so much that does go on that I can feel energetically there's a massive amount going on but I don't always understand what it means or what it is specifically I just trust that it is what it is and for whatever's required and sometimes people really get it sometimes people don't and also they can have benefits into the future and not actually connect or associate that the bowls have contributed to that and that's okay that's just sometimes how it goes so the other thing that is super super important if you're working on people is that it's about getting out of your own way too because you're just contributing energetically and and working the bowls for them to contribute energetically and it's not about what you think should happen what you think should is a solution for someone or anything like that and it's also not about thinking that you're doing the healing because that's not how it works um, most genuine healers know that they actually can't heal anybody if a person is ready willing and able to heal they can heal but it's something that comes from within and no, if someone is not willing to heal, no amount of any sort of treatment is going to create anything different. But what's magical is when someone is ready, willing and able to heal and they're saying yes to that and they're genuinely showing up with that intention and then you have an intention to be a contribution to them in any way that is required beyond what you might cognitively think or or believe that you know that is where the magic happens because it's the combination of what you're contributing and what they're willing to receive that actually creates the change that can be on a physical level emotional level psychological level spiritual level but it's really important not to have an egoic sense of you, you know like that you're in, kind of important or that you're creating that or anything like that and i'm not saying that you're not important but there's a real there's a healthy ego and an unhealthy ego approach to this and it's really about being a contribution to the other it's not about you but it's also not about making yourself small because it's so easy to just go, oh, well, it's not me, it's them, you know, they're the ones that uh, have the capacity to heal or not and it's the bowl and the bowl has all this magic and it has nothing to do with me. So you can play small uh, and that's sort of not required either. So the unhealthy ego can be smallness or superiority so if you can find a place in the middle somewhere which is like you know what I'm just showing up I love doing this it's feels wonderful to contribute and my heart is open and I'm just willing to show up and contribute whatever I can in the best way I know how with these beautiful tools these beautiful instruments and 
let the cards fall where they will because really it's not up to us at all. So that's everything that I can think of that I've learned over the years about working with these beautiful sound alchemy beings and offering therapeutic sound to people. And this is about just one bowl I've been focusing on here, but I will do another video with more than one bowl because that changes the dynamics. And I wish you every joy and success in your unfolding journey with your beautiful crystal bowls and anything that you can contribute to others and what a joy that can bring to them as well. So it's all so wonderful and special and all the best.